The anime really doesn't let up this season, does it? We're already in episode 5 and I'm still snowed under with anime from the last few days. It's not as if it's a big lump either, but it's a steady flow of good anime and bad anime just being thrown at me constantly. But can I tell the good from the bad? Well, at first glance it appears so, but I've been proven wrong in the past, so I'd better look at them all again and let you know what I think of them. And let me know if I've missed anything good as well. I will be skipping sequels of shows I've not seen, so if it's a sequel to a show I've not seen, then tell me why I should watch the original series and I might give this one a try as well. Because this is a 2020 autumn anime preview from a different perspective. It's that time again, boys and girls. It's that time for another Isekai series. It's time for, by the grace of God's, another Isekai series coming to you from Funimation this season. And if one of the most popular Isekai series of the last few years is that time we got reincarnated as a slime, then by the grace of God, is that time we got reincarnated and befriended a whole bunch of slimes because Ryoma seems to be taking a leaf from history and befriending loads of slimes. And that's about all he does in this episode. He just befriends a lot of his slimes, saves some warriors and some fighters, and is in their debt, and makes them in his debt. He's this kind of super powerful, he can use all magic type isekai protagonist, but he's not arrogant about it. Not that I ever expect Ryoma to be arrogant about anything. We do get to see a clip of him from before he was reincarnated in another world. And it was this big, quiet, hard-working office worker who You'd be expected to have died of hard work, or or fainted on my home and got hit by a train. No. He died in sleep. He died in sleep because he sneezed too much and bashed his head on the floor. So he has the isekai protagonist with an embarrassing death trope that go from as well. The real weird thing about the anime is how he's not really participating in the world. He gets transported to another world and just decides to live on his own raising an entire army of slimes. And that's another thing with slimes, that useful creatures as they are, most of them are okay. It's just these salvager slimes which I'm a bit questioned about. I mean, like you get slimes which uh, clean the house, fine. Slimes that do dishes, that's another good idea. A market room to the housewives. Slimes that d dissolve poisons, perfect, great idea. Slimes that dissolve poop. Moving on. The main thing which happens in this episode is a bunch of either adventurers or heroes or nobles travelling through a forest hunting and one of them gets heavily injured. And so what does Ryoma do? He takes them back to his home, by home I mean hidden cave, and heals him with medicine he's made himself. Suddenly this weird kid with superpowers like magic and potion brewing and all these advanced things you'd expect a sage to be able to do, this guy's been able to do it as well. And so when they need help in the future they come a knocking and he's still there for his for their beck and call. No idea if it's going to be going for good that way or not. I imagine it would be. We're not really told too much about it this episode. But The Grace of Gods is an interesting looking show. It doesn't annoy me like a lot of Isekai protagonists do. But it doesn't floor me either. There's nothing special. Nothing captivating by, by The Grace of Gods. It's just an Isekai anime. It's there. It's not going to insult you. It's not going to... Insult your intelligence either. It's not got any weird random tuning bill crap. At the same time, it's not really got any plot so far either. If you are interested in watching this one, you can find it on Funimation. Now the next new show of the season I've got absolutely no idea about. And I've even watched the episode, I've still got no idea about it. It is Eagle Talon Golden Spell. A anime about superheroes who can use the internet to make people want to go to a toilet. That's pretty much it really. There was a bunch of stereotypical supervillains who are all banding together to do evilness. You probably picture your favourite supervillain and they'll be in this anime in some kind of form, just a parody version of them. For crying out loud, one, one of them is basically Bison from Street Fighter. But instead of Bison books, he's buying random smartphones for his shopping street door owners in order to get them to download an app so they can make them go piddle themselves. Well, frankly I have no idea either. It looks to be a sequel or spin-off of an, an older show, but again I've never heard of it. This is more new to me, there's a superhero and they're making COVID jokes. If you are interested in weird, zany, off-the-wall comedy, maybe this one's one for you. Especially like topical comedy, because there's pretty more um, socially distanced superhero, supervillain fighting. 
crying out loud the superhero deliverer's final blow using what is essentially Uber Eats. I'm not really sure I'd recommend this one, it kind of blanked on me, it kind of wiped it from my memory, but if you do want to try it, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. Good news everyone, because everybody's favourite macho, military history, good food eating, Manso's comedy adventure series is back with Golden Kamui Season 2, or Season 3. Not quite sure what to call it because technically it's season two, but people refer to it as season three because the second season or second half of the first season was so separated from the original first season. People think about this season two, whereas it's technically season one and a half, but it's New Gordon Kamoi. It's continuing the story. There's no difference in the series. It ended on a cliffhanger. It's starting on that cliffhanger. Everybody's favorite Immortal, Sugimoto and Asuka are back, kind of or good times that we had by all, well, by most anyway. And as I say, we rejoin the action right where we last one left off, with Sugimoto being separated from Esopa, and Sugimoto not actually being dead. Oh come on, you don't think that to kill off the, the immortal character, the main character, do you? That'd be ridiculous at a show like this. Nobody's ever dead. But the show's going in an interesting direction, as we now know, because we now know about Nopuabo, he is Esopa's father, but he didn't do the murder, or so he says. And so, our brave band of adventurers, led by Sugimoto, along with Tanagaki and a bunch of other people from Sumi's 7th Division, set out trying to track her down, because Asipa is going along with Kuranke and their bunch to try and find the Ainu Gold, or the people with tattoos. I kind of forget exactly which one it is. It's been, it's been a while since I watched the end of the season. No, actually, yeah, it really hasn't. So it gets a bit hard to follow sometimes. The main thing is, Sugimoto is chasing down the people who've got a zipper in order to save her and the good times we had by all. And it really starts out strong with a return to form. You've got mostly gritting to your teeth cold adventures because they're heading further north. Further north even than Hokkaido. As they're entering into the current Russian area, but at the time Japanese area, of Karafuta, which is north of Hokkaido. It's that weird little dangly bit on the end of Russia because apparently some of the tattooed prisoners escaped here which kind of makes sense. Escaping overseas is a great idea. And there's lots of hilarity going on in the first episode as well. Mostly man service which is fine. I mean if you're watching Golden Kamoi you've really got to know that fan service is only so far away and Golden Kamoi does fan service in the same way it does man service. You get the big burly men, topless, quite often bottomless as well, in very homoerotic poses for laughs. And I'm okay with that because I've grown to love that about Golden Camo. It was very much food and man service at its fore. And the story kind of being dragged along with it. As these four beautiful Japanese men end up fighting some random Russian guys in a cage match effectively in order to find out about a tattooed man and try and find out where a sip has gone. There's not much more to it than that really. Um, this is going to be an interesting storyline. We should be getting a finale in this season or this series or at some point anyway. It's going to be fun. If you've seen the original Golden Kamoi, you know you're going to like this one. If you've never actually seen the original, I do recommend going back. It's not a normal type of anime I would do recommend. I don't normally go for Japanese history anime because quite often they can be dark and gritty or violent or not that funny. But Golden Kamoi gets that perfect blend of lightheartedness with historical accuracy, with adventure, characterization, and fun. If you do want to watch Golden Kamoi, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. And if you do watch it, don't watch it while you're hungry. Or if you are hungry, be sure to eat something tasty and pleasant while watching it. And say the rest of us, hina hina. Sleeping Beauty is one of the traditional anime fairy tales. You get several various different tropes when it comes to school plays in anime. You've got Sleeping Beauty, you've got Cinderella, you've got a little match girl. Or a rain, but that's only if you've got a loner in the class who would have wanted to play on their own. But Sleeping Beauty is the one which is being looked at here. But not in the way you might think. Welcome to the world of Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle. As our beautiful main character princess is kidnapped from her good rest kingdom and taken to a demon king castle and kept there as a prisoner. But our sleepy princess is having none of it. I mean, she's not trying to escape, but she's not having a good night's sleep either. You see, our princess likes something more than to have a good night's sleep. There's no way she's doing that in that terrible bed with terrible pillow, 
Um, random monsters walking by loudly all the time. She's not getting a wink of sleep, it's just too distracting, too disturbing and too uncomfortable. What's the princess to do? Well, you know what she's going to do? She's going to try and make it better in various ways. One of the first ways she does it is she makes herself a really nice, good pillow. How is she going to do that when she's locked away in a prison? Well, good news is, there's these fluffy little teddy bear monsters who she decides to brush and they sort of molt fur everywhere. That fur is really, really soft and nice. And so she grooms them, but she gets their fur. But she, fur itself doesn't really act as a pillow. And she goes and looks for some cloth from curtains, and then some herbs from the Demon Castle storeroom, which she sort of sneaks in and gets surreptitiously. She gets some thread from some demon monsters and makes herself this beautiful, soft pillow. And so she finally has her first good night's sleep she's had in ages. And the rest of the episode plays out very much like this as well, as the princess is very much a terror. I mean, she's scarier than even the Demon King, to be honest, because if she got her mind on something, she can do it, and she'll do it no matter what you think. I mean, she's crying out that loud. She spends half the episode walking around with this ginormous pair of scissors. She'll probably take someone's eye off of that. And she basically just kills a monster to get the cloth which is part of that monster in order to make a sheet for herself. And she ends the episode in such a way that she's getting a perfect night's sleep in a coffin. She's upgraded, lined with perfectly smooth and perfectly soft sheets, a lovely pillow. She's given away a crown and replaced it with a headband which looks, looks like a crown because it's more comfortable. There's a whole lot going on here and it's all about the princess getting a good night's sleep. She really is sleeping beauty until she gets number four in her head and wants to go out and massacre half a demon castle in order to make it happen. You won't be too surprised to know this cute girl doing cute and scary things anime it's from our friends at Doga Kobo. If you do want a good night's rest, or just want to be scared witless if you're a monster, you can find this one aiming over at Funimation. The weekend has been well and truly crested this time, with our four shows taking us well and truly into Monday. And I enjoyed some of them, and there were some real stingers in there as well. Let me know in the comments what you thought of them, and next time I've got four more new shows, which I've probably watched already. But thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, bye bye.